beautiful blue sky sunny day here in Great Meadows, New Jersey, and we are building a fence. Um, we're doing a hot coat, high tensile fence here. Uh, this will be holding in our, our cows mostly, but uh, when we do eventually start to rent out to boarders, uh, it needs to be able to house horses as well. Uh, so that's why we're doing a special type of uh, coated wire, which I'll show you later. But I, uh, I got going on this row of fence posts here and then uh, decided like, oh wait, I should be videoing this. So this is already done, uh, but I can still show you the process that I go through uh, with the remaining side that I have to do. So we're gonna be running from this post uh, here. I'm actually gonna go diagonally over to this uh, little spot on the ground that I've already measured out, which is just past 16 feet, about 16 and a half feet. And that is gonna give us a better way to drive through here. If we need to use this as a parking lot for an event, uh, we can drive through this 16 foot gate into the pasture here. Uh, on the ground, I just strung a, a string between the existing corner posts and marked on the ground. Uh, this is uh, eight feet away for the corner and that, that does a H brace here. And then from this point, we go every 20 feet. If we walk 20 feet this way, there we go. 20 feet, you'll see a little circle there. There'll be another one here. So every 20 feet, I put a circle on the ground. And again, I made that straight just by stretching a line uh, from that post down there to the other end. So next step in the process is to take our skid steer and I use our four inch auger bit. And this basically ends up drilling a pilot hole a four inch um, auger bit is gonna drill more like a six inch hole almost, just shy of it, five inches. Uh, so it gives us a pilot hole. It pushes any rocks out of the way that might be in there, uh, pushes them off to the side. And then that way when we come back and we've dropped the posts in, they go nice and straight uh, down to the ground. So drill the holes first, then uh, I'll, I'll walk the mini excavator over to the trailer, pick up a couple of posts, walk on over here, crawl, I guess, if it's uh, got tracks on it, right? And drop one by each one of those little circles uh, that I've drilled, and then we'll pick them up, put them in the holes, finally come back with the post pounder on the back of our tractor and pound them into the ground. So these guys right in front of me here have just been placed with the excavator, and now the, um, the last step would be to pound them down uh, another couple feet with the post pounder. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll drill the holes first, and then we'll go through the process. So one of the nice things about using a uh, post hole digger on a skid steer is that um, the, the auger itself kind of hangs free on some hinges up there. And that way, as long as it's hanging free, it's actually headed straight down plumb. Uh, so you just kind of hover above the hole that you want to drill, get it centered up real good. And then I gotta switch hands over here. Um, you can start the auger up. Uh, how am I gonna do this? I'll put it on auto mode, hold on. I didn't get it part of the video and uh, do this at the same time. Sorry about that. Couldn't uh, couldn't run the machine and video at the same time. So here we are now. We're uh, got the auger spinning and we just drill our pilot hole right into the ground. It usually goes pretty straight. Uh, once in a while we hit a big rock and uh, get stuck. But for the most part, just go straight down the ground, no problem. Again, this is really just for the sake of um, making a little pilot uh, hole um, and pushing the rocks out of the way. Actually, I just hit a rock there, so she did go a little off. We'll try and move over and straighten out a little bit. There we go. You can actually hear it hitting that rock. Uh, usually, if I work it long enough, it'll push it out of the way. to get a video of it but we use the excavator over there to pick the posts off of the uh, trailer and then bring them and drop them in each hole and kind of push them down a little bit so they're set and then come back with this uh, device pounder on the back of the tractor and it just hydraulically uh, drops that ram and dries
drives it uh, the rest of the way to the ground. We usually get about three feet in or so is good. And then we'll string our wire and later on I'll just cut off whatever excess post is sticking out the top. So that's the post pounder. Uh, this side all done. Uh, we're working with the pierce work on the post pounder there. And we've got to go around this corner and then hit this run going all down this way. And then we will uh, go back with the the excavator and straighten them out and then start stringing the wire. It's the next step in our process where we use the excavator to just uh, plumb up any poles that are just slightly out of, uh, of level. So we're just nudging them around. That does create a little bit of loose dirt. So Hunter is over here with a sledgehammer and he packs the dirt down. Uh, if there's any loose uh, gaps around the bottom of the pole, he packs them down. So going through the whole fence line to do that now. So we got all the posts uh, straight uh, up and down nice and plumb with the excavator and Hunter was pounding the dirt in with the, um, what do you have? He's using the sledgehammer. Uh, so the girls are coming back now with this little stick that we have, a little template that has all the spacing for the wires on it and transferring all those over to the posts. And then we'll come back and begin to put in all of our staples and start running all of our wire. So along. Forty-five more to go. Wow, thanks Doug. <laughs> yeah. And that's gonna be easy with that to level it. Gonna land on this again as well. The next step in this process, uh, before we finish running all the wires, is to put in the H brace. So on this one over here, you can see there's a horizontal brace. Uh, this is actually what keeps the high tension wires from pulling the post over. Each wire, let's say I tighten it to say 500 pounds or so, uh, five wires is gonna be about 2,500 pounds pulling sideways on this post. Obviously that would just pull it over. So we put a wooden brace back to this next post. And then diagonally, we place a high tension wire in a figure eight pattern and then ratchet it tight. And that's actually gonna pull this post back straight again and allow us to yank with uh, thousands of pounds of force. So we're gonna line this all up now. Uh, the height of this is easy because there's already one here. So I'm just gonna match that height and drill through. <laughs> we'll put a 10 inch uh, pin in there called a brace pin, just a steel rod really. So uh, I'll drive this through. I'm gonna leave about an inch sticking out. That inch just gives me um, something to place the, the hole uh, I drilled on the, the H brace uh, in. So just get this. Now, I drilled a hole in the end of this already, so we'll just line it up, slot it in. Next, we get our level, place it on the brace, raise it up and down until we're level.
braced. We used up all the uh, attached ones. And then just drive a brace pin through, hold it in place. Now the H is in, so now we're going to string the high tension wire diagonally to tension it. And we need uh, to just put a... Alright, we got this figured out now. Um, I thought that this was going to be in the way of the diagonal, but it turns out the diagonal goes the opposite direction. So, put a staple in at the bottom of this post over here. This is the way the diagonal goes, so we're actually okay. I'll grab my high tensile wire, and we're going to go... Uh, down to our staple on this side. And then we're going to crisscross this so it makes a figure eight. So I'm going to come up through this side and around that brace pin. And then again, we're going to go figure eight through. Feeding that up through. We want our, our um, tensioner to be about in the middle. So it's going to end up around there somewhere. So here's the tensioner. Just slip that in. There we go. Got our tensioner. And then we make our final run with our figure eight over the top and back down. We're going to trim that a little bit. Get my pliers. Got our cutters. So we'll just take all the slack out and then we can cut this wire right around there. Make sure you hold on to it when you cut it. It does go flying, you can lose an eye. And we just feed it through. Um, get it started. Get it started by hand a little bit. And then we'll get our little tool to tension it. This little guy here. Start cranking it in. Together. You can hear the wood actually moving. Now to get started, uh, don't crank on it too much. You can actually end up pushing this this uh, corner post out. So we're gonna leave it right where it is. Got some good tension on it right now. And then once we string our wires and start pulling on this, then we'll go ahead and tweak it. Uh, so that's putting the H brace together. Again, it's really just a horizontal beam running across, make it nice and level. Brace pin up top there, sticking out about an inch, and a staple in the bottom over here. And then you just wrap, uh, figure eight your wire through the middle with your tensioner. And when you crank on this, what you're in essence doing is pulling this H brace back this direction, which is pushing this post out on top. And that's gonna counteract the thousands of pounds that are pulling on this uh, by the five wires that we're going to put in. That's it. Spinning Jenny here pays out your wire. It's a thousand foot coil. And uh, we're paying out five runs to do this line right here.
All right, here's, so here's how we go about terminating. Uh, this is an electrified run of the fence. Uh, I'm doing five runs and they're alternating electric and ground. So uh, the bottom line is electric. That would help with anything that wanted to go underneath. The next line up is ground, then electric, then ground, then electric. Uh, the theory is that with the ground, if an animal comes against the fence, uh, they're gonna complete the circuit from the, the uh, electrified line to the ground line and get a stronger shock than just their feet touching the ground. So uh, that's what we're doing. Um, first step, don't forget, oops, you have these insulators, uh, one for every post going down the line. So you need, in this case, I have, uh, well, I have uh, 12 posts and then I put two more. So I have 14 total. And that's because sometimes this line, when it comes across this um, tension wire from the H brace, will be really close to it and it could cause it to arc out to it. So I will always leave one there that way, if you have to, you can zip tie this together and that way it's insulated uh, and you don't have a problem. So I have all my insulators already placed on the line. I've stripped off the end of the cable. Um, actually, I don't think I mentioned, this is hot coat, it's called. So this white portion is just, you know, vinyl, like plastic material, but then there's a carbon fiber black line down the sides of this cable. And the center actually has the uh, high tensile wire. This allows you to pull this as tight as a high tensile fence electrify it and the um, electricity is conducted out through these little black lines on the fence um, but it has high visibility for horses and also if they were to get their legs stuck in or something like that this wire will cut them rather easily this soft uh, vinyl is a lot better for them so that's the reason we're going with this fence so insulators are on uh, we've stripped back the hot coat portion we now need a uh, fence post insulator this is just another way of insulating this uh, electrified wire from the post but it also has a piece of metal on the inside that will um, allow this to not cut through the insulator so we're gonna put that up oh, i'm lying i forgot we got to put our crimp sleeves on first i'm doing two crimp sleeves one of them is actually going to hold the fence in place the other one is just going to be so that i can crimp the electric wire onto it uh, later to electrify it so place them on place our fence insulator it is. Then we can go ahead and put this around the post. Like so. And then just feed your um, your wire back through the crimp sleeve. Like so. They're a little tight, so. All right, so we got that on, center up our insulator, and now we go ahead and crimp it. I'm using long crimp sleeves, they uh, grip better. And we just place this on there, and usually it takes two or three crimps uh, down the line of the, of the sleeve. The last one. All right, and it should look pretty much round um, instead of oval when you're done. That's it, we're, we're now attached. And we can pull um, our tension on this. So I'll go down the other end now and pull it nice and tight and then go back and finally lay in all my insulators and nail them to the fence post. And that's it. And there they go for the first time into wow. the new pasture, newly fenced. <laughs> They're a little excited about it. <laughs> there they go. This will certainly give them enough food uh, for quite a while. I think they're gonna be in here every bit of three weeks, maybe a, a month, uh, munching this all down. So there's the five wires we put in. Pretty straight, not bad. I am gonna go back and cut all the posts um, so they all look nice. So the tops of the posts will all be done there's the back side out there and all in all we got just over uh, 3,500 feet worth of hot coat wire and about 50 fence posts so uh, it was a good project all done I'm glad it's done oh they're coming back let me oh, oh. Yeah. yeah I know back up oh no back up all right let me go deal with this Looks like they're starting to settle in. They haven't really discovered the run-in shed back there yet. 
They'll find that when there's heat, I guess. But uh, they're finally kind of walking around, starting to eat a little now. At first they were just kind of racing around, running like crazy, exploring the place. Happy cows, happy cows. Are you happy? You a happy cow? What do you say? Hmm. Well, that's a tooth problem. So, that's, uh, so this is our pasture number three. We actually skipped, we have one and two, we skipped three and four, and we did five, which is uh, way out back there. And now we're coming back, and this is gonna be three right in here, and then right over where the um, backhoe is right now will be pasture four. That'll be a small one, kind of an isolation pasture for um, you know a, a sick horse or a cow or any, anyone that needs to be isolated. It'll just be a small, about, um, I don't know, 100 foot by 200 foot uh, pasture. So that's it, five wire hot coat. We alternated uh, the hots and um, it all went pretty well. It took uh, about two days to get all the posts in and took two more days to get the wire done. Of course, it's also blazing hot out. So uh, I did take breaks to run to Home Depot and things like that to uh, get out of the sun. So anyway, that's installing a hot wire or hot coat fence, high tensile and happy cows.